today we will be learning about earth movements and specially among earth movements today we will be seeing we will be studying about the epirogenic and the orogenic movements there are a number of movements but for today's lecture we will be seeing the epirogenic and the orogenic movements now these are the various earth movements that you are seeing over here these are the various types of earth movements so we will be seeing only these two today so these are the various types of earth movements so because earth's crust you have already have an idea of what the earth's crust is so the earth's crust and its surface the surface of the earth they are constantly changing earth Uh, the earth's crust is not a static thing it's a dynamic thing so it is constantly evolving constantly changing how it is changing because of the various these are the various forces because of the various forces and these forces as you are seeing here endogenetic and exogenetic so these are from within the crust when it is from within the crust inside the earth's crust that is called endogenetic and when it is from above the from forces from above the earth surface like for example the glacial or the river waters these are not found inside the earth crust but these are found outside the earth crust so these are called exogenetic this is endogenetic and exogenetic forces now these forces this endogenetic and exogenetic forces these forces they causes changes to the geomorphic structure what is the geomorphic structure that is the earth structure they cause changes to these two forces endogenetic and exogenetic forces they causes changes to the geomorphic or the earth structure now these uh, forces they are not same had they been same then we would not have subdivided them or sub categorized them they are not same some of them are very slow the, uh, some of them are very slow these are very slow movements but some of them or for example weathering etc erosion these are very slow we uh, we don't see weathering very suddenly uh, as like we see earthquake or volcanoes so some of these movements are very slow like weathering or erosion uh, which takes lots and lot lakhs of years maybe for a mountain to be fully eroded away and but then there are some which are very sudden like this earthquakes volcanoes they are very sudden now what do we mean by the term diastrophism and diastrophic movements when we refer to diastrophism that means deformation it has come it means deformation diastrophism means deformation deformation of what obviously of the earth's crust due to what due to these diastrophic movements now what are diastrophic movements since diastrophism is the means deformation and diastrophic diastrophism occurs due to di diastrophic movements and what is diastrophic movements these are the deforming movements so one is deformation and these are the deforming movements as you are seeing here do forming movements now these deforming movements or diastrophism they can be categorized into epirogenic or epirogenetic movements and orogenic movements epirogenic can also be referred as continent forming or orogenic can be referred to as mountain uh, forming now these diastrophic movements can be folding faulting warping fracturing etc we will study about these in details there is another term called geomorphic agents what are geomorphic agents they are the mobile agents or the mobile medium what is mobile like which can move that is mobile that is like water running water can move sea water can move they are not static ice mass they are moving glacial sheets they are moving wind is moving so these are the various moving objects so the geomorphic agents are those mobile mediums which can remove 
because when you erode they have to remove them which removes transports the eroded materials and also deposits the eroded materials to somewhere else three kinds of uh, works are done one is removal of the materials that is through erosion then that is transported that is called mass wasting that is the eroded materials are moved from one place to another and then that is deposited somewhere else so these three things are done by the geomorphic agents which are these then we have the geomorphic process what is the geomorphic process the various physical chemical or biological processes that occurs that takes place on the earth's surface due to these various endogenetic and exogenetic uh, forces that is called the geomorphic processes the various physical chemical biological etc like for example because of this the process is what faulting so that is a physical process so the various physical chemical biological etc processes that is a result of all the endogenetic forces of all the exogenetic forces which results in change in the earth surface that processes those processes are called geomorphic processes and the last one is geomorphic movements so what are geomorphic movements these are large scale physical and chemical changes that takes place on the earth surface so when we have the folded mountains fold is a type of a tensional uh, compressional orogenic movement but when we have a large scale movement due to fold and that is a like a folded mountain etc so that means a large scale physical change has occurred on the earth surface then we call that as a geomorphic movements or maybe the plates the various plate tectonics the various plates they are moving then that is called geomorphic movement so geomorphic movements is not on a small scale it is on a large scale so now let us see about these so today we will be studying about this diastrophism about this uh, epigenic and orogenic movements so in epigenic movements the epigenic uh, movements are of two types as you are seeing over here one is the upward one is the upward and one is a downward so epigenic movement is like this upward downward upward downward so like this that is why it is called continent building it is not like this it is like this upward downward moving up then it is emergence the moving down submergence so but this this is epigenic so this is what this has got this moves uh, the these movements are radial movements these movements epigenic movements are called radial movement why radial because they act along the radius of the earth and this movement like i told you they are either subsidence subsidence or away from the center if the center is this if the center is this maybe they will move towards the center towards the central point or they will move away from the center so this is upward so if this is a center so moving towards the center means downward moving away from the center means upward so supposing this is a central point so uh, away from the central is going up and moving towards the central is coming down so this is called vertical movement moving up and down then we have the orogenic movements now what is the orogenic movements so this in contrast to the uh, epigenic movements this is a, a quite complicated movement and this occurs due to the various tectonic movements now as you are seeing over here this is written what horizontal movement the earlier was like this vertical but now we are having like this horizontal movement this side either this will move away from the center i the center or it will move towards the center so this is horizontal 
and generally and this is of tensional tensional means if it moves away from the center and compressional if it moves towards the center that is compressional so we will see more of this so uh, this is a particular uh, example of uh, such a kind of a uh, orogenic movement and over here generally as i said that orogenic movement has got it has got to do with the plates the various tectonic plates so when the various plates these are the various plates we will see more of this in the plate tectonics theory when the various plates converge then that is characterized by folding faulting or magma or volcanism so these are the various orogenic movements now let us see in details about the various movements so this is the epirogenic movements so as i told you that they are of two types so first we will study about the upward movement so as you are seeing over here there are two types of upward upliftment of continents or upliftment of coastal lands so these two types so when we have upliftment of continents then what happens a part of the continent is raised up or part of the landmass is raised up now see this picture over here when the two continental crusts are coming towards each other then or they meet each other then one of them it is raised up or when two plates moves against one another then this continental uh, plate crust it is moved up because it is moved up what happens various mountain ranges have occurred similarly see this picture over here this particular area this has moved up against this place so this is upliftment epirogenic and see this this is a coastal area the various horizontal lines shows the various times when this was uplifted this was uplifted again this another time it was uplifted similarly again another upliftment had it been in a single go then it would not have been like this step kind of feature so upliftment similarly you can see over here also this coastal area has been uplifted first it this area see the height of this then it has been uplifted again it has been uplifted again it has been uplifted so these are the various features of the upliftment of coastal lands and how this name epirogeny has come because the central parts of the continents they are called cretons and from that from the word cretons they have uh, and these were the central part of the continents they are called cretons and they are subjected to epirogeny and from then has come the word epirogenetic movements now let us see certain examples of india so in india also we have upliftment of coastal lands so uh, this is the example so these are the various examples of the uplifted coastal lands where you can find raised beaches now this place over here this uh, this picture over here this is the uh, this is the place is called koringa koringa near the mouth of godavari river now this particular place was a very uh, flourishing seaport around 1000 to 2000 years ago but now there is no seaport because of what because the land has been upraised the land has been lifted maybe you can not see the land like you can see over here the land is visible but over here maybe you cannot see the land but nevertheless the depth of the sea has reduced because the depth of the sea has reduced so this area is no more a seaport Uh, because see this is natural vegetation you can see natural vegetation over here some gateway over here this is the koringa national park there is a national park over here so that means this area which was earlier under the sea now there is land surface so these are the examples of upliftment of sea for india now let us see the second phase of the epirogenic movement and that is the downward movement till now we were seeing the upward movement so this is the downward movement 
Now, downward movement can be of two types. Just like previously, it was land and coast. Similarly, over here also, there is submergence or downward movement of the land area that is called subsidence. And the submergence of the land near coast, that is submergence. One is subsidence when the land area is sub, uh, subsided. See the land area over here, it has subsided. That is called subsidence. See this picture over here. This particular area, the height was till here in 1925. It subsided to till here in 1955. And now in 1977, this is the ground level of this particular place. So this has subsided, but then again, and why it, is, why it gets subsided? See this particular layer, it was over here, but then it has subsided because of some burden, maybe because of some overstress, or maybe there is water uh, because the stress, the pressure, the, there has been decline in pressure in the downward area. Because of decline of pressure in the downward area, so what happens, the above pressure pushes this particular layers to down, downside. And then we have submergence of land near coast. This is a particular uh, example. You can easily understand that once upon a time, all this place was land area and this was a sea area. But then now it has submerged. It has come down because of downward movement and because that has happened, sea water has entered over here. Now there are other various examples from India of subsidence. Now in 1819, a part of run of Kutch was submerged due to earthquake. Then also we find peat and lignite. See, peat and lignite are examples of coal. Now you won't find coal in a sea. For coal formation, you need a forest and you need land. But then we find peat and lignite formations near Sundarban area. Now Sundarban area of uh, Bay of Bengal, this part, this is a sea-based area now. So that means once upon a time, this was land area, but now it has subsided. An interesting feature over here, see the Andaman Nicobar Islands. And this is the Arakan coast. Now, if you see here very carefully, see these are the shallow areas of Bay of Bengal. And that is why this is the color difference from satellite, satellite images. These are the Andaman Nicobar group of islands. Now see here, uh, these are the shallow lands. That means the sea is shallow over here. Why? Because of land surface. That is why she, uh, sea is shallow. Now you can easily chalk out uh, this kind of a shape and this shape, it can easily connect Arakan coast with uh, Andaman Nicobar with this Medan Islands, with this Malaysian Islands over here. So that means this entire land, once upon a time, this was a part of land surface, but because of subsidence, a parts of that land surface has subsided and whatever has not, not subsided, that is known by Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Again, we find examples of such in Bombay Island. Another example is the famous Gulf of Mannar and the Park, Park Street area. Now this is the Park Street and the Gulf of Mannar. This is the Adams Bridge. The Adams Bridge, which is also known as the Ram Setu, the Adams Bridge. Now over here, if you can, if you just see, then there won't be, you can't see any land surface. But if these are the satellite images, so if you see over here, you can see that there is land surface protruding out from Sri Lanka and also land surface protruding out from here. And from satellite images, you can also see the presence of some land surface because the sea is shallow. And this is the actual picture, camera picture from that place. So you can see over here that very it is visible, that land surface is visible over here, though underwater. That means these parts has subsided down. So these are the examples of subsidence. Now these are the various orogenic forces. Now we come to the orogenic forces which are horizontal in nature. Till now we had the epirogenic movement. And I had already told before that these are what? Horizontal in nature. These are horizontal in nature. 
now this orogenic movements or uh, these are also called mountain forming movements mountain forming movements and these are horizontal in nature and they act tangentially and this tangential movements they act tangentially so this tangential movements because of plate tectonics they act tangentially this movement can be of two types horizontal movements can be of two types see the uh, over here these two things so one can be opposite to each other see the force this if this is a block of a uh, rock then or block of crust then one of them is moving this side the other one is moving this side so because of this this is called a tensional force or divergent force because of this what happens when crack is developed in between and because of crack one of them moves away from the other either one is uh, moves down or one moves up so one of them moves away from each other but then if it is same direction that is see these arrows over here this is this side and maybe this side is also this arrow is this side so when both of them moves towards each other then uh, there is compressed both is compressed when they are moving towards each other then this block is compressed because of compression one of them rises atop other or in so if it is not risen up if it does not rise then it becomes folded because of compression it becomes folded so one is opposite each other because of opposite it develops a tension which develops a crack or fault now this is an example of a fault because of tensional fold uh, tensional forces the crustal rock over here this crustal rock over here there has fault has developed and through this fault you can see this small stream is flowing now earlier it was once one total one block because of tension a crack has developed and this crack we call this as a fault now there are various terminologies of fault one of them now first is what is a fault plane now this is a fault plane these are the fault plane this is a fault plane so that is the planar surface fault plane is a planar surface along which along which if this is a fault plane along which this displacement occurs this is a fault plane so along this this displaced displacement has occurred so this is a fault plane so because this is a this is this planar surface it is this planar surface along which the blocks the displaces gets displaced the blocks along this plane the block is displaced so this is a fault plane then we have hanging wall what is the hanging wall the, this is the hanging wall it is the faulted block which lies on the upper surface of the fault plane so when there is a fault plane one will be like this one one will be in the upper side one will be in the lower side so this particular block which is in the upper side of the fault plane see this is in the upper side this is a hanging wall and the wall or the block which remains under the surface of the fault plane this is remain this is a fault plane so this is remaining under the surface of the fault plane like for example this this if this is a fault plane this is remaining this block is remaining under the surface of the fault plane this is called the foot wall then there is this dip what is a dip it is see an angle has been formed so it is the angle of inclination it is the angle this is the, the this moves this side so this is the angle the angle which is formed the angle of inclination measured from the horizontal this is the horizontal so this is the angle of inclination at which angle this particular plane is inclined at so this particular is inclined at this angle so this is the uh, the dip the dip of that particular uh, block then we have the strike 
Now this refers to an intersection has occurred. This intersection. Again, see this is the dip. This is the dip. And what is the strike? Strike means this is the intersection point. Intersection between the horizontal plane. So this is the horizontal plane and the inclined surface. This is the inclined surface. So the inclined surface and the horizontal plane is intersecting at this point. So this is the strike. This is known as the strike of this particular block. Now these are the various type of faults. First on, we have the strike uh, slip. So in the strike slip, it moves left or right. It moves left or right movement. See either this side or that side. So this moves along the direction of the strike. So either in the left side or on the right side of the vertical plane. That is the strike slip. And in oblique slip, what happens? It occurs both in the dip and the strike direction. Generally, all the uh, generally all the faults, they uh, the movement, the displacement occurs along the dip and the strike of that particular fault. Now these are the various types of faults. These are the various types of tensional forces. The first one is dip slip fault. Now in a dip slip fault, these faults basically are of these two types. They are normal fault and reverse fault. Basically they are of two types. Now what is a normal fault? In a normal fault, first on see this color. This was in a same, same uh, block. Because of fault, now see this one was over here, but this one was still here and this one was still here. Now this has come down under force of gravity. One of the part comes down. But in a reverse fault, one of the part, instead of coming down under force of gravity, it goes up. That is a reverse fault. So basically we have these two types of dip slip faults, but then these can be categorized into these three more types. What are the uh, three types? This is a step fault. See this uh, sort of uh, uh, gives us an impression of, this one gives us an impression of a step. We all know what is a step. Every one of us has a step in our homes. So this is like a step, one, two, three, three steps. Now, this is a fault system. This is not a fault, but a fault system where we are having a number of faults, one fault, two fault, there may be other faults also. So there are a number of faults. And if you see the fault plane, I've already said what is a fault plane, this planar surface, this planar surface is a fault plane, this planar surface is a fault plane. So these fault planes, see, they are almost parallel to each other. So in a step a fault, this is a fault system where the various fault planes are parallel to each other. You can also say that this is a series of normal faults. Here a normal fault has occurred. Then in relation to this, another normal fault has occurred. So you can say a series of normal fault which gives us an impression of a step. This is called a trough fault. This is again a fault system where you can see two normal faults has occurred. So normal fault, I have said, what is a normal fault? When the one of the part moves down under the force of gravity. So this part in relation to this has moved down under the force of gravity. This part has moved down in relation to this under the force of gravity. So this is a fault system. So when we see that two normal faults has occurred. So here one normal fault has occurred, here one normal fault has occurred. So this block between the two faults, this is known as a graben. This is known as a graben or a rift valley, this particular place. Now generally it is seen that this is associated with this type of landform because when, uh, once this is the down throw side, then this is the up throw side. Or in another case, what may happen is that Maybe reverse fault may occur. See, reverse fault has occurred in such a way that this particular area block, instead of coming down, goes up. And this one, with respect to this, has again, uh, uh, it again goes up. So maybe reverse fault 
or again a normal fault occurs in the sense that maybe that this particular block this is the surface area and this particular area has come down or this particular area has come down so over here there are two normal faults but if the uh, middle portion goes up then we have a reverse fault so this is again a fault system and this upthrow side this middle side which is this upthrow side this is known as a horst or a ridge fault a horst or a ridge fault now these are some real life examples of whatever i have said now see this normal fault this particular block earlier or this particular block you can see the color and you can see the color so this was particular lodged here earlier but now it has come down so it is a normal fault but over here you see this particular thing was over here but then now it has gone up so this is a reverse fault against the force of gravity you can see over here very clearly a step like feature see these colors step like features you can see here a horst and a graben this particular thing has come down so and in india uh, we have the example of the satpura range you have heard about the satpura range that is a horst and uh, the narmada that is horst mean, means the upthrow side so this upthrow side is the horst and the narmada river it flows through this particular area which is a graben so in india we have the example of satpura range and the narmada next we have when towards each other see how this particular thing is folding up when we have pressure say towards the same direction so maybe towards from this and from this direction so it does not crack but it bends it folds see how this has folded up so this folding occurs this is called as crustal folding or warping warping is a term when a huge area huge a large area is folded up either it is folded up or it is folded down see when it is gets folded then a particular area is folded up this is the up this is folding up and this particular area is folded down this particular area is folding down so uh, when a huge area is folded up or down that is called warping in this picture you can see how these things this uh, this particular mountain pressure went from this side and this side due to which it has folded you can easily see how this has folded similarly over here how this has folded this is the down uh, downward side you can see the downward side and again the upward side now again warping warping may be because of convectional currents movements under underneath the earth crust and this is an example of the colorado plateau which is an example of warping now uh, folds basically we uh, divide folds into two types one is a syncline and one is the anticline what is a syncline syncline is a huge area which has which bends down see it has bended down so that is called a syncline generally because it bends down so obviously because the relief gets lowered relief gets uh, uh, relief gets low so what happens generally uh, lakes or rivers may flow through them or they are the valley areas and when it is folded up when a huge area is folded up that is called antique line and obviously these are the areas of the various mountains or the folded mountains now folds can be of various types depending upon the uh, depending uh, of the amount of depending on the amount of pressure that is been given a fold may take various shapes i have already told you about anticline and syncline so these are the various uh, examples of the folds so the anticlines and synclines about that i have told you now if it is continued compression from one side if it is continually from this side it is compressed then what will happen and this will result 
to this particular limb being overturned because of the continuous pressure this will be overturned on this so that gives to an overturned fold sometimes because of too much of overturning then there will be a uh, too much of pressure like see this is too much of pressure then this because of too much of pressure then one of the uh, limb this will almost bend over the other like over it is almost bending like a circular motion so it may bend over the other so these are the various examples of folds various types of folds we will see more of this so this is an anticline this is a syncline this is an overturned fold see how one of the limb has turned over other this is an overturned fold this is an axial plane this has overturned and recumbent is what i have told you recumbent is because of too much of pressure see too much of pressure one of the limb this almost gets fully overturned fully rests on the other like this particular area you over here the picture the photo over here this is fully resting on the other or like this this particular limb is almost resting on this particular limb now there are these are the various landforms because of folding we have the fold mountains of which himalayas is the prime example of the folding folded mountains the appalachian the himalayas etc these are the various types of other terminologies of fold when we have a symmetrical fold this is called the axial plane this is the axial plane the axial plane is almost vertical and both the limbs the both the limbs are almost they are supposing this is the imaginary axial plane axial plane over here then if this is the axial plane then the angle which the limb does with this axial plane will be the same as the angle that the limb does over here with this axial plane so the angle in a symmetrical fold is same the angle that is made with the limbs with the axial plane on either side will be same in an asymmetrical fold the axial plane instead of vertical it becomes inclined and both the limbs are as symmetrical if you have an axial plane imagine the axial plane over here a line drawn through this place if you draw a line through this place then the angle between this limb and that um, line and this limb and that line will not be same so the this is called asymmetrical fold over here symmetrical fold and asymmetrical fold one of the limb uh is the angle is not the same with the other then isocline and fold the they are almost the axial planes are almost parallel to each other i have already told you about overturn fold in an overturn fold it has a got a highly inclined axial plane over here also it was inclined but it is highly inclined axial plane and one of the limb is overturned in a recumbent fold here you can see a recumbent fold the plane is almost horizontal the axial plane over here was vertical but here it is almost horizontal if you draw an axial plane through this it is almost horizontal this is almost horizontal and one of the limb almost rests on the other sometimes a nappe occurs and in a nappe what happens or an over thrust fold because of too much of overturning it cracks from here when it cracks along the axial plane then one of the limb it slides over the other like it has been done over here then we have the chevron folds these are v shaped see these are v shaped and they have very sharp limbs and very sharp angles these are some real time uh, real images of whatever i told you right now so this is a symmetrical fold you can see over here if you can draw an imaginary line you can see the angle will be same both side as symmetrical fold if this is an imaginary line the axial plane then the angle between each limb and the axial plane is not the same so this is an asymmetrical fold an isoclinal fold 
over turn fold see recumbent fold as if this one is almost resting on this particular limb the upper limb is resting on this particular limb and this is a chevron fold or v shaped fold etc so this was about the various earth movements